Okay, so the observer. Okay, so so the uh, the observer tool. So essentially, the observer tool is a form of self-inquiry, and it's inquiring what's the uh, what's my true nature. So the, to how one inquires into one's inner nature is, you know, I like to use the mug. So this is a mug. And this is the basic principles of self-inquiry. So the mug is is an object. And if there is, if you are observing this, is anyone here in this room a mug? No. no. Okay, good. That's the right answer. So you are you you are the observer of the mug. Yes. A mug is an object. And not only is a mug an object, a, a mug is a limited object. Yeah. So that's very important. So. Whenever you observe something which is limited, the observer of the, lim of the limited object is not the object because the object is being observed by the observer of the object. Okay, So that's the basics of self-inquiry. Also, a mug, if it passes before you, are you the mug? No. And if the mug is not here, are you the mug? No. And if the mug is in front of you, are you the mug? No. So those are, okay, those are good, good answers. <laughs> Those are correct answers. So, okay, so, so a limited object, whether it's in front of you, passing before you, not here or, or here, uh, they're still not you. And it's an object. And it's a limited object. It has a shape. So it's observed to be uh, that which is not you. I mean, another thing is it's a meaningless object. So it's observed with... De this is a, a meaningless object. So it's observed with detached observation which is different to uh, um, identified or attached observation. Okay, so the next thing is thoughts. Okay, now thoughts are passing by. They come and go and sometimes there's not many thoughts and sometimes there's no thoughts and sometimes there's many thoughts. There may even be thoughts here right now. So, now thoughts pass and they change and sometimes they're here and sometimes there's many. But they're passing, aren't they? They're like little objects, like little ants or something, crossing across, running across the landscape. So are you, are, are you the thoughts, are you the observer of the thoughts? This is an experiential question. The observer. The observer, yeah, that's good. So even though thoughts may be here or not here, or they're coming and going quickly or not coming and going quickly, or there's no thoughts, there's many thoughts, the observer of the thoughts is not the thoughts. And the or the presence that observes thoughts is not thoughts. And thoughts can be here or not here, and yet you're still here. So just like a mug can be here or not here, it's irrelevant to who you are, whether it's here or not. So then, so it's experienced that uh, there is observation of thoughts, which is independent of thoughts. And therefore, and if you let go of your identification with thoughts, it's irrelevant to who you are, whether you're identifying with them or not. Just like if someone was, if there was a mug in front of you and you identified or didn't identify, you'd still be here. It doesn't matter, you see. So that's a spiritual experience, to experience that which observes thoughts and realize that thoughts are not you. The next thing is, um, uh, with thoughts, uh, is the body and is the awareness of the body. Now, if anyone's identified with the body, there is a sense of location and there's a sense of like width and things uh, or there's a sense of the body now if there's a sense of the body sometimes there's awareness of body sometimes there's no awareness of body sometimes there's awareness of the shape of the body sometimes there's not, not awareness but can you go to that which is observing can you be that which observes the body yes good so when you become aware of that which is observing the body but which is not the body then you experience yourself as that which is observing the body. So the observer of the body is not the body. Because remember, if something has like limits, has dimensions, then the observer of that is not the dimension. There is that which is observing the dimensions, which is not that. So just because you see a mug, you're not the mug. You're that which is observing the mug. And if you're aware of identification with the, with the body, then the observer of the body is not the body. 
you see. So then you, you experience, then you have the experience that there is a, a field of observation which is not the passing thoughts, which is not the limited body. Then we have the thing of uh, location. Battery is flashing. Okay. I think that means it's, it's, it's nearly the end. Okay, well, it will just naturally, it's okay, let it go off. So, okay, then we have um, location. You know, do you have a sense of location? So then, if you feel like you're located somewhere in the room, then be that which is observing location. So the observer, now go to that which is observing location. Now, is that which observes location, does that have a location? No. No, it doesn't. That's right. So the observer of location, the observer of all locations is locationless. Mm -hmm. There is no there is no location. Then we have like time. Something is tracking or trying to track seconds and and t what I call time tracking. But that which has no which is observing time and has no interest in time. Does time exist in that which observes time, which has no interest in time? No. No. Okay. Great. So we start to get an experience of, of the, the witnesser or the observer where there is clear differentiation that it is not thought, it is not the body, it is not time, it is not location. What about images? Sometimes an image may just randomly flash up from when you're three years old and then it may disappear. Is the observer of an image an image? No. No. Good. Okay. So it's imageless, it's thoughtless, it's bodiless, it's timeless, and it's locationless. Now, now that we've come to this place, the next thing is just to inquire of the nature of self. And if the nature of self in any way feels contracted, limited, or is bounded, even if it's this whole room, then if it has a limit, then go to the observer that's observing whatever limit or form is still left. And as you go to the observer of that, you'll find that that limit will dissipate. Because when you're... The only time when something exists is when there's attachment or identification. When there's attachment or identification with time, then time exists. It starts to feel personal or it starts to feel like you, or if there is attachment or identification with the body, then it seems the body is real, or the body is what I am. Or if there is attachment and identification with thoughts, then it seems I am my thoughts. But if you go, if there is attachment, just go to the observer, and if there is still identification, go to the observer of that observer. Go to the detached observer of the observer, and then it will start to dissipate. Also noise. That which observes noise is noiseless. No noise exists in it. It's only when there's identification with noise. So you go into the fields of the infinite. So that's the, the process of inquiring into the nature. And if the nature of self seems to be limited or contracted or time-bound or location-bound, then go to the observer of that and see if that limit exists in the observer of that.